Hello everyone, this is James from LLP and today's video, video number four I believe, is going to look at some issues that we see with game-based language learning. Uh, this image is from Becca 2016 and this is her image of a magic bullet of game-based learning. We would like people to think that games are not a magic bullet and they require a, they require some serious pedagogical um, considerations for successful implementation in the classroom. Uh, I think things like this kind of reinforce the idea that games are this magic bullet and if you use games students will be engaged, they will be learning. So I think this is quite irresponsible actually. So some issues with GBLL. Level up. Tech is hyped in contemporary society which tends to be techno-utopian. The idea here is that there is a big focus on tech over teachers or tech over the human. So tech, yes, of course, can solve many problems, but it is not the be all and end all. Um, so definitely be a little bit skeptical when we're looking at ed tech or uh, technology in general for educational purposes. Another issue with GBLL is that a lot of papers start by writing that you know 99% of kids play games of course they don't say that um, but you know it's basically 100% of students right um, so just because games are popular does not make them something easily implementable and I think that there's a, a misconception here that popularity means should use um, so here's a few papers that talk about the popularity of games and why and then go on to say, well, that's that's one of the reasons that they should be used in class. I think one of the the the, the scholars that I'm most envious of, or what am I trying to say? One of the scholars that I'm particularly fond of is uh, Carol Bloom, who talks about the the social and cultural capital that students have as game players, and that is a, a much more sound um, reason for using games in the classroom. That is. If students are playing games and it's something that they're familiar with, then why not use that familiarity or that that um, habitus, their um, their level of knowledge of games as a, a starting point? Or why, why do we not leverage that as something to be learned from in the classroom, rather than just saying that they're popular and the fact that students have knowledge of games and can link that to an educational or academic topic is something that we should be trying to leverage more as teachers. So. Next, this refers to call research and DGBLL in general, is that MMOs are used a lot in this field, yet nothing seems to be filtering down into classroom-based implementation. Um, you know, you have case studies of one student, you have case studies of four students, three students, five students, very, very small sample sizes because they're lab-based studies. How does that help a teacher? There's also then a problem with the focus of DGBLL studies. In a recent study by Poole and Clark Midura, there was a, a systematic review of DGBL study, DGBLL studies, and from 49 papers, they found that 30 investigated um, student perceptions of a digital game that were played for L2 learning. So what did they think about playing the game? 18 studies in the review focused on L2 vocabulary development, Seven studies investigated the affordances of digital games for L2 learning, and the rest are on specific skills. So, do you like playing games in class? What vocabulary can we learn when playing games? I wonder what can be learnt when playing games seem to be the, major, the, the, the main focus of GGBLL studies. Again, this to me um, is kind of a focus on not classroom implementation, but just the the value or, or what can be learned from, from games as a content tool, essentially. Uh, so there's a, there's, a, there's a big focus on these two um, topics. We can do more. So speaking of what can we do more, um, well, what can we teach with games? Consider games as just another media for a second. Then it becomes quite clear that games can be used in many different contexts. ESP with simulations, EAP, uh, English for Academic Purposes, from a multiliteracies, or connected learning perspective. Um, this is from Dehan, which is not forthcoming actually, it's actually printed now, it's uh, 2020. We can use games online uh, as part of formal or informal learning. Um, this, this, I've wrote something about this. 
It can be used from a CLT or TBLT perspective, and there's lots of papers on this. Um, it can be used to teach 21st century skills, so games requiring problem solving, collaboration, etc. Um, game communities are another valuable resource, again mentioning Bloom here, 2019. So gaming as a social practice and gaming culture and identity are something that can be looked at in the classroom. Rather than just playing a game, think about gamer culture. Do you identify as a gamer? Why? Why not? What kind of, kind of a gamer are you? Okay, there, there is a whole world of um, game-based game, game culture and students' particular identities as a gamer that could be tapped into. Another problem with GBLL is why not drop the D and bring back the T? Um, so by this I mean that, <clears throat> as mentioned before, game-based language learning does not necessarily have to be digital. However, unfortunately, as call features the word computer, in its title, the word digital is almost a required prefix to game-based language learning. And so DGBLL is the default term for studies exploring games and second or foreign language learning and teaching. This promotes, in my eye, uh, a technology over pedagogy and learning over teaching. So for example, you'll see later in this, in this series that I have done a, um, a very rigorous course um, learning English as a, as a foreign language using board games, yet having nowhere to publish um, research on this particular game-like teaching uh, was one of the inspirations for the inception of ludic language pedagogy. So I'm saying that, um, is GBLT a good, a good way to go with this? Well, we're still, look, we're still stuck with G at the start here, where we have found that, or at least I have shown that, game seems to be synonymous, synonymous with digital game. So I think that um, game incorporates all of these different things. Um, there's, of course, digital games, there's tabletop games, traditional games, simulations and role plays are a game-like or a play-based um, activity. Storytelling, debates, make-believe, drama, live-action role-playing games, um, work, playful worksheets, activities and puzzles, language play. So all of these things out, um, below digital games are also kind of game or playful activities that will not get a chance to be published in a call journal. So this is why we go for the term ludic over game, uh, where um, providing a space for teachers to publish their work is vital in, in process, process progressing the literature on empirical game and play-based interventions. Therefore, in order to be inclusive of as many types of games and play as possible, we opt for the term ludic as a unifier, creating a space for both researchers and teachers to publish their work. Again, where is the teacher in the DGBLL studies? Well, first of all, what, why even mention the teacher? So the te teachers are considered the ultimate interactive technology. This is from Adams 2005. Teachers develop and implement curriculum or curricula. Uh, teachers intervene and lead language development. Teachers convey conceptual models. Teachers impact learning outcomes more than any other factor in uh, a classroom context. And this has been shown in huge meta-analyses by um, Hattie. But they're underrepresented in, underrepresented in the literature. If you remember video two, I think it was, where we looked at GBLL studies, there was no real teaching. So where's the teacher? Um, this, again, this is by focusing on digital games, perhaps the field has shot itself in the proverbial foot by excluding teachers. This may account for why there are so many hypothetical studies on game use in language teaching. Because researchers with research budgets to buy digital games are the only people that have an avenue to publish their work. Looking at this quote from Reinhardt, the description in his book, it's one of my favourite quotes of his, um, the description He's talking about um, a chapter where they are introducing a research project. And this is how he introduces the research project that um, is in the book. So basically how to do game-based language learning research. So regarding this, the description is written not as it would appear in a published journal article, but as a narrative first-person account. Explicating, explicating thought processes, reasoning, 
and reflections as we designed and implemented the project. We have the, f you know, anyway. The purpose is to illustrate the nitty gritty of gameful L2TL research. So second language learning and teaching with games. That's his particular term, gameful as well as the fact that the published report of any research rarely describes research processes as they actually occur. It's, act it's spot on, um, but I think that um, this, ex this section illuminates a problem with the research field for teacher researchers like myself, in that research papers are required to be clinical, sterile environments, void of the nitty gritty of intervention creation, implementation and assessments. I and LLP is based on showing this. We want to show the nitty gritty of teaching with games. What does a teacher do? How do they go about it? How do they mediate? How do they create um, materials? Why did they create those materials? All of these things need to be shown in order to allow teachers to have a voice in the research literature. For a very, you can see the LLP papers that we have on our website, or you can also see Darvasi 2016 for a similar walkthrough of his own ludic teaching. Um, right, so a few more issues with GBLL and what that we try to um, solve or alleviate with LLP. Games are provided as content only. Play the game, we'll see what you learn. And this is from a few different studies. Full lesson plans that address significant topic areas to situate learning at the problem solving level remain relatively scarce. So they're saying that, you know, there are no lesson plans for how to use games in the classroom. Um, that's from 2015. Effective affordances are receiving too much focus. That was shown in Poole and Clark Midura. Uh, the majority of DGBLL studies featured positive outcomes in regard to student learning, with the most frequently reported ones being related to affective or psychological states. And this is from a meta analysis in 2018. Uh, again, the definition of game is ill-defined in the literature, where virtual and social world, worlds, flashcard programs, and gamification studies are all lumped in with game-based studies. Some more issues. What kind of games to choose, or what kind of games to create? How to find opportunities for language learning within gameplay? How to integrate gameplay into the curriculum? Game researchers are not gamers. Games equals frivolous, therefore SLA is not considered serious. Uh, sorry, games are games are considered frivolous. SLA is not considered serious, therefore scholars struggle to promote GBLL as a theory-driven discipline. This is from Thomas, two thousand and twelve. Essentially, um, SLA serious. I'm using quotation marks. Serious SLA scholars are, are hesitant to use games um, for the fear that it will demote the the officiousness, the seriousness of SLA. Um, in the first, well, in the first place, SLA is not considered that serious, and then the use of games just makes it even less serious. So that that's one fear that student that t that researchers have when they think about using games in the classroom. Um, this is a quote from Orhashi in two thousand and seventeen, um, and this was from a this is from a teacher perspectives of using games in the classroom. One particular teacher wrote this. Why are you asking me about games? Games are only relevant when they have a learning principle behind them. Yes, totally agree. So the important question is, what are your learning principles? Games? Mm, games. I'm a foreigner in Japan. That does make, not make me a game monkey to entertain you. So again, this, this is kind of uh, showing that what Thomas said, this particular teacher has a, a bad image of games, that it's just a, a frivolous piece of uh, crap that can be thrown into the classroom. And what about the learning theory? What about learning principles? What LLP is promoting is a, a, a very strict or rigorous implementation of games into um, existing learning principles or teaching principles. So that is a video on the issues of GBLL. The next video I will be looking at LLP. What is ludic language pedagogy? What do we um, want to do with it? And how can you get involved? So stay tuned for that.